And we're on round number two, bitch. Round number two <laughs> for viewers who are wondering what we're talking about. We've just filmed about 35 minutes of the show and something happened mid-filming and I started to panic a bit and I saw it that it suddenly went off. So I don't know what happened, but bitch, we're back. Round two. Let's kill it a second time. Same energy. <laughs> Let's get going. It's week 16 of the NFL, bitch. I've said at the, um, on the last version of the show that it's been a tough couple of weeks uh, for me on the betting, but I made the excuse that I follow a lot of NFL betting accounts on Twitter, YouTube. I think everyone's been struggling. It's been a crazy couple of weeks, hasn't it? It has, yeah, That's, especially yeah, this, especially this weekend, weekend just gone, just got three, three massive comebacks, massive comeback. um, uh, the Bengals the down, down 17, 17 to come back and score after they score a nice goal against the Bucks, um, the Jags uh, winning Jags over time against the Cowboys, Cowboys. and then the biggest and then one the of these, the biggest comeback in NFL history is the Vikings beating the Colts 39-36. In overtime, I've been 33 now. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Come back. Come back. <laughs> I was with um, I was actually with my friends. I, I had the um, the Vikings to win that game. It, it was it was in the it was in the late afternoon. I had the Vikings to win. I just put a nice little dabble on it just to make it interesting as I was watching. And I, like I said, I was with three or four of my friends, and I went, "Oh, what a brilliant bet!" And the piss take was flying when I told them. Obviously, it was like <laughs> all angles coming at me. Yeah, you suck. You don't know what you're talking about. Uh, I even clicked it off. To be honest with you, bitch, we started playing FIFA. We did anything else. I think we were chatting. We made some pizzas. We I avoided that game like the plague. I was miserable. Then all of a sudden, I thought, "Oh, let's just check. Let's just check. Check my phone. Saw the score. I went, boys, get that TV back on." We're, we're having fun tonight, lads. We're on it. <laughs> Everything went off. We had the right laugh. And then, obviously, watch the watch the final minutes as uh, Minnesota pulled off the win. What a game. Yeah, crazy game. But yeah, on the other hand, I'm just thinking, hand, just thinking, as a coach, as a coach I'm not, not even a fan, fan just what fan. Just want how do you blow a 33 minutes lead? Being <laughs> <laughs> on the other fence. <laughs> And, and, and as a result of that, I don't know if it's as a result of that, but you know, Matt Ryan's no longer the star in the in the in the Panthers this week, so it'd be a bad one to. I'm not seeing that, bitch. I'm not seeing that. That's new. That's news to me. I saw a tweet about Nick Foles and all that. Thought that was a bit five for bit four years too late. That tweet, but then I guess. My fault. I've missed it. I've missed, uh, I've missed the news. Nick Foles is the starting quarterback for Atlanta. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Just, wow. just some crazy just decisions some down, down, down the end of it. Is, is it because Jeff Sattler was maybe Sattles, not had that experience as a head coach? Fourth and one, and you you're the quarterback sneak. You could hand it off. You could hand it off. Nice. Nice. Some some interesting calls, and obviously now looking at that result. Don't board well. Don't board well. I think if you do quarterback sneak it, which I think obviously they do say that percentage of a quarterback sneak is stupidly high for viewers that might have watched the game. An explanation is that normally does work. It is it's it's nine out of ten times that normally works. The reason Bish has put it on is because it's Matt Ryan, he's probably the least athletic quarterback in the whole league. You'd you'd rather put your You'd rather put your backup in there. Why wouldn't they put Sam Erlinger? He's a massive quarterback, quite athletic, powerful. You took any, you took the running. You'd, you'd go to why? You'd do many other things than have Rat, Matt Ryan when it's on make that athletic play. It's not even that athletic, but Matt Ryan's that unathletic. Where I think it, uh, <laughs> I think it, 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 it Yeah, crazy decision. And then, like you said, he just didn't play well at all, did he? In that second half. Um, some of the play, you know what I mean? It, it, yeah. And he kept trying to, I watched it, he kept trying to, he, he went for a few solo runs that obviously always ended in shocking consequences. Like, it, I don't think it ever ended well. But he kept doing it. I'm like, Matt, Matt that, that were you 10 years ago. I think he needs to realise. I watched a podcast talking about Matt Ryan and they were saying, like, it's, it's, he plays like he's, like he thinks he's 29 years old. He yeah. tries to run it a bit. He's throws. He goes for these sixty-yard throws all the time, and it's like you can't, you don't have the throwing ability to do that, and you don't have the athleticism to run that. Like, know what you are, system quarterback. 
you know the players, you could hit a, your brilliant accuracy or your what your was. Just play it safe, and it, it can't. It, it just can't seem to accept. I get Cristiano Ronaldo vibes. The old can't accept <laughs> where he's at in his athletic, uh, at his athletic age. Yeah, his, his arm hasn't his looked great, has it? Um, yeah. As an athlete, you're gonna, you're gonna try out here. At some point, you need to realise uh, yeah, uh, yeah. and, and adapt. But adapt. Well, play calling well, for me. Early downs, early throwing early downs, the ball. Throwing the ball. You know, you're just making it harder for your quarterback. You know, putting him, you know, behind your ads or behind your arms. So, yeah, it's it's a game probably that will we want to probably. Stew on for, Stew for, quite on for, a while. for quite a while. Yeah. Um, right, we'll get into it then. On the back of that, we'll go the team that beat the Colts. First game of the week, Bish. Minnesota Vikings versus the New York Giants. The Minnesota, Minnesota obviously, minus four favourites. And the over-under is 48 points. Where have you got this one? Minnesota riding that high, and obviously with that big record, they come to the division as well. They're well. in the playoffs, and we've spoke about them a lot. There are a lot of points, but they're always coming from behind. Can't quite. Well, not it's not can't quite at all. They're just not like it. It's not like it. With a record of eleven and three, it's sort of flat as to deceive because I really don't see him doing much in the playoffs. So, but in terms of this week, you know, Minnesota minus four at home. I just don't think the Giants have got the points in them. If it goes against them, they're a massive win for them. A divisional game. Commanders. They look good for the playoffs. Leaned on Barkley a lot. He's doing really well. And Cave on tip really first first round draft pick. Um, he got um, he got uh, trip, uh, fumble, trip, fumble, return for a touchdown. For a touchdown. You know, so that really set that really set that really for them. For them. Um, but uh, uh, but I just think the Vikings are too much. I'd be on the I'd be minus, the four. minus four. Um, I'd probably uh, take a gamble on overs on the points as well. Oh, big call on the overs, yeah. Um, I've got. Obviously, Saquon has been brilliant. Um, I, I said, didn't I, that the, the Giants to me have just been that inconsistent. I just I, I get scared betting on them now. I've, I, they've let me down or surprised me too many times. Normally, when I don't think, yeah, I can't work them out, to be honest. I don't know when they're going to do well, when they're not. Um, fun fact for you, though, Bish, Minnesota have averaged 29.7 points a game. And uh, that's on offence. But obviously, as you always <laughs> bash them for rightfully so the defence have been terrible and if in the rush in particular they've allowed 84.9 rush, rush in yards per game which is I think crazy that, that's the average to running backs that's just off that's just off the scale isn't it there's normally you have a big game that's mad and then that's 3.8 yards so on a on a free down basis they get every team's getting the first down consistently, which says it all really on why they're having to make these massive comebacks. Um, I've got, though, I think the only viable New York giant uh, that I can see is uh, Darius Slayton getting a touchdown. I think that's not one of my best bets, but some fun for people who are watching Red, Red, Zone, Red Zone to have a bet on. Uh, Slayton's their only viable wide receiver. They didn't, for some reason, they, 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 he didn't get along with the team at the start. But now he's he's, he's he's earned himself the number one wide receiver spot. And I think he's going to get a touchdown. He's due one. He's only on two on the season, but he's the number one receiver by far. So I've got him getting a well-deserved and earned touchdown this game, Bish, with uh, the Vikings' defence being that bad. Yeah, it's, it's a fair challenge. I think I, I put him in one of my bets early on in the season. Um, you know, he looks good out there. And he's... Ultimately, their main main um, wide receiver at the minute, so there's a good chance with that. Like I said, the the Vikings are leaking like a sieve at the minute. So <laughs> yeah, the um, I was saying, yeah, the Vikings, the fraud of the uh, NFL, are being called, and you're you're all in on that. I think Vish, you're the uh, number one cheerleader <laughs> for that uh, statement. <laughs> No, I, I, the score plenty of points. Like I said, I mean, Kirk Cousins last week he had uh, he threw for 
410 yards, four touchdowns, but you're throwing two interceptions in there. But in the playoffs, I just think at well-rounded teams like the Eagles, the 49ers, I just think they'll, uh, you know, they'll they'll cruise past. Not maybe not cruise past, but they'll have too much for for the Vikings. Yeah, uh, one of those teams could be the uh, Buffalo Bills, basically, which brings into the next game. Uh, well-rounded team, the Bills against the uh, Chicago Bears. The Bills are minus eight favorite, uh, minus eight favorites, and the over/under is forty points. Uh, where, where have you got this one, Bish? As you know, I've got a, uh, I've got some fun in this game. <laughs> I, like, I like the uh, the overs in this one. I think that will be one of my will. I won't guarantee it now because I've I've got a few that I'm debating, but I think that's that's one I like the the overs over forty point five points. Um, I think it's it's covered in the Bears last eight games and it's the Bills last four out of six. So I think that's that's nice. Um, big win for for the Bills last week against the the Dolphins divisional game. They they clinched their playoff spot, and it's Josh Allen. He just he just always seems to do it. You know, puts the team on his back. He had. Over 300 passing yards. Um, sorry, I've lost my spot. 300 passing yards, four touchdowns, and he ran for 77 yards as well. So um, he does. He does an awful lot with, you know, not not much around him. Um, and I think he's up there for you know an MVP shout. Um, so yeah, I, I like them. The Bears that you know they run the ball a lot. Fields electric, can't get hold of him. Last week he was breaking out of three or four tackles on one play. Montgomery will run the ball. Khalil Herbert's back off injured reserve this week, I believe. Um, so they'll be competitive. You know, they run the Eagles course last week. Um, but yeah, I like the overs in this one. On the spread, I'd probably lean the Bills minus nine. Minus nine. Minus, minus eight, minus sorry. Minus eight. Oh, eight. about to say, wow, that would be uh, that would yeah. the day if you pull that one off, Bish. Um, like, as you know, I'm going opposite on this one, Bish. I think mainly based on the weather, um, the, the reports coming out that it's going to be minus 10 to minus 15 with the wind chill uh, Fahrenheit. So if you do the math, that is inconceivable how cold that is for English viewers. That'd be, it'd be in the minus 20s. Minus eight, I think minus 18, minus 19, around that. We're talking that level of cold, which means normally there's not much, there's not much catching, there's not much <laughs> wide receiver play. It's, it's, the, it's the running backs and the running game. And that's what shines for Chicago. Um, Fields is averaging at seven yards per carry, which is just astronomical. And um, the Bills actually struggle against the run. If any, you know what I mean. If, if I'm picking out one thing, they do is struggle against the run, and they struggle against fast running backs. I think there's more. There's a physical type running back, the Derrick Henry type, and there's also fast ones. And one of them last week was Raheem Mostert, one of the fastest in the NFL, I believe, and he averaged seven point five yards per carry against the Bills, uh, and that correlates with me, Jade, uh, Jalen. Uh, <laughs> Justin Fields uh, running wild. He's the fastest uh, quarterback, maybe with Lamar, but I think uh, Fields is the fastest. They've got Khalil Herbert, who is electric. He's now back. And then obviously Montgomery is just going to pound them down the middle, beat them up down the middle to open up the edges for Hertz and Herbert to run run around, I believe. So I've, I'll bottle the claim that Chicago will win. But I've got them covering the plus eight here, Bish. I think I've got them covering the plus eight. And if anything, I'm going to go the unders just because of the weather. I think they're both yeah. going to run the ball. I think there won't be. Diggs has been struggling the past couple of weeks. They don't really. Gabe Davies is an amazing game and goes missing for three games. So I can see this one being quite a quiet game for the wide receivers. And I think it's going to be run. So I'm going to take the under and. Um, and the Chicago Bears to cover. Wow, we've gone totally up to the one. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, that would be the big competition, Bish. We'll see uh, we come back on a Saturday night messaging each other saying, yeah, it was right. Uh, next game, Bish, we've got the Seattle uh, Seahawks versus the Kansas City Chiefs. The Seahawks are plus 10 in this, Bish, which is a shock to me. And the over-under is 49. Uh, where have you got this one? 
Yeah, big over big under. Uh, Chiefs minus Chiefs 10 minus here. 10 they were yeah, minus 14 minus last, last week. And didn't come up with the goods. No, they seem to be pondering a little bit. Um, they're electric on offense. You know, ranked number one in points scored, total yard, um, over 400 passing yards a game. But they, you know they've let a big sleep, a uh, big lead, sorry, split um, against the Broncos two weeks ago, and then you know just getting by the Texans in this time this week. Uh, it seems to be a bit of a theme with the top teams at the minute. They're just not quite getting it done. Um, but off, yeah, yeah, it's a tough one. Tough one. Looking at the Seahawks, they've lost four out of five. Out of five. They're on the slide out, they've started really well. Really well. Sort of petered out a little bit. Um, big yeah. news for them is three more Smith in the Pro Bowl. And that's that's cool. a big that's a big dream. Given his um, uh, contract uncertainty at the end of the year, yeah. the Seahawks keep him all over the uh, yeah. test the free agency market. Um, um, and just looking just back at the Seahawks, the Seahawks, they've only had they've one loss, you know, on the seven that they've had, week two, week two against the 49ers. That was that bigger was than bigger the than spread, spread, bigger than the 10 points. So, so, just being a Pete Carroll team, team, you know, you know a tough, gritty, tough, gritty team, team. I'm, I'm going to go Seahawks 10 in this one. Won't be my best bet, but I quite like that one there. Yeah, uh, I'm with you, Bish. I think a bit of explanation into why I think it's they've not lost by more than 10 is that they love to run the ball, don't they, the Seahawks? And the two cornerbacks for the Seahawks have been unbelievable, which kind of stops big plays happening, which stops high scores as such happening, big differences, because that means to win against the Orcs, you've got to run the ball. And naturally, that normally means less touchdowns, more time on the more time, less time. Sorry, in game. Obviously, that's it wastes more time running the ball. Um, so that's probably maybe an explanation as to why. Uh, without going deep into the stats, um, I've got a fun one for you here though, Bish. The Kansas Chiefs, um, Kansas City Chiefs, uh, four nine and one against the spread. Mm-hmm. So you've got to go Seahawks plus ten here, and you've got to. I think you've got to. It is one of my best bets. Uh, as I mentioned, Tyler Lockett being is out. That's the only thing that worries me. Obviously, one of their best um, wide receivers, obviously with DK. Um, so that's that. That puts a bit of doubt in my mind, but I, I can't see. I can't see the Seahawks losing more than ten. The Chiefs are not very good on. Defense. They've not been for a couple of years, really. At the end of last season, they kind of showed it up, didn't they? But then it, it unraveled again in the playoffs. Um, yeah, Seahawks, Kenneth Walker's going to run everywhere. Um, I think DK, I, yeah, I've, I've, I've got Seahawks. I can't see it, bitch, like you. It is one of my best bets. I'm going for it. <laughs> I'll, well, I'll, I'll take the confidence into the game. But maybe take the under. I think the under, the under as well, because like I said, the uh, Kansas City Chiefs rely so heavily on the throwing attack with Mahomes, with the wide receivers. They spread it around. Everyone gets a chance with Kansas City and the wide receiver core. So I've got the under because Tariq Woolen is leading the cornerback surge for the Seahawks. And I think that means Kansas City are going to have to run the ball. And I don't believe Pacheco, McKinnon are that good. I think it makes them look better because the because uh, Mahomes and the wide receivers do that well that it just opens up that much space for the running backs. So take the I'm on the under and Seahawks plus ten on a nice little double to make it you make Ooh. to make your Saturday a bit exciting. <laughs> nice. Next, nice. yeah. Next game, Bish. We've got the Houston Texans versus the Tennessee Titans. The Titans are minus three, and the over under is thirty five and a half, Bish. What have you got? I've got a nice start on the nice over under on this one. Um, since the start uh, of 2011, in this matchup, this matchup it's, covered it's covered in 15 out of 23 games. Game. So that's 65%. That's, 65%. So that's, that's a nice edge. That's a nice edge. There. Um, um, 36, it was at 35 and a half. So that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's quite doable. That's quite doable. Um, um, I think this I one, think the biggest matchup for me is 
he's a, a, the Tepton for Rundy. Um, and yeah, obviously, we know the Titans with Derek Henry. Henry. You know, that's that's, no, that's probably that's, their strongest that's asset. Strongest um, I think um, I think I gave gave a bit to Derek Henry last week, and he looked a bit sluggish, sluggish uh, not quite with uh, it. And then he smashed his 104 yards in a touchdown last week. So, <laughs> <I'm lying away>. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, the, no, the Texans have yeah, no, having a dig last two weeks. Well, they, they, they ran the, the Cowboys close and then just lost in overtime to the Chiefs, as we talked about. So, you know, they're having a dig, yeah, they're they're having a dig. Well. and like you said, no matter who is on the field, you know, they're missing a lot of starters. You're playing for contracts, aren't you? You know how quick the NFL is. You know, you're playing for roster spots. You know, there's always, there's always players out there, you know, giving the all. So, uh, only given Sunday, as this is. Yeah. Um, on this one for me, I'd be on the overs. I like, I like that overs like based on the that, that I gave. Um, and also yeah, Derek Henry, any time touchdown. The, the, the higher lines are, the higher line are yet, so yeah. not sure so well, what his line will sit at, but maybe we'll have a little bit, a little teaser on two touchdowns Derek Henry. Said that might be the first big double. We said it in the uh, first yeah. attempt at this video. The first big double is a potential. He's not... You weren't quite sure on it uh, the first time round, Bish, but you sound a bit more confident this time. Maybe not a double. As well, uh, <laughs> uh, don't want to be too adventurous, but, uh, but I do like it. I do like it. Yeah, I've, um, I'm with you. The over under before that amazing stat you brought out looked appetising to me. Anyway, the Texans have been impressing me in the fact that they're they're just having a dig. I, I don't think they want to end the season with only uh, one win. I think they're going for it. I'm not confident they'll beat the Titans because the rush defence is that bad. Derrick Henry is obviously one of the best running backs in the league. Um, Titans have got a good rush defence, which means the Texans will have to throw it. It's going to be back and forth, maybe a few turnovers. But yeah, I think I think it'll be a fun. I think it'll be secretly quite a fun game, Bish, and I think definitely all over that overs with you. The next game, though, Bish. Um, the Cincinnati Bengals versus the New England Patriots after the comebacks that we spoke about at the start. Both of them, both of these teams were involved in one of the uh, games. Obviously, the Bengals, their big comeback. And the, the, oh, no, the Patriots weren't. But we've not spoke about it yet. One of the worst clips of all time, linking with the butt fumble, the famous butt fumble, linking with the famous um, going out of the back. Uh, <laughs> Going out the back on the touchdown, which was done by my man who I watch on TV, that I've now forgot the name. Dan Orlowski. Dan Orlowski going out the back to lose the match. There's been many silly highlights you've seen in the NFL and the New England Patriots might have just topped them all, Bish. Take us through a bit what happened. Give us a, give us some sort of explanation if you can. Yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be one of those iconic moments, isn't it? Um... You know, it's, the clock's ticking down. It, it looks like they've settled to go into overtime. Stevenson takes the carry. And I don't know whether it's a, just a rush of blood or he thinks he can make a play. He laterals it to a wide receiver. To Kobe like, Myers, yeah. Later, and then he, he throws it back, I think, aiming for Mac Jones. And there's there's a, a Raiders defensive lineman, Chandler Jones. Just He must just turn around and see this ball come, come at him just... <laughs> What's happening here? <laughs> Gives uh, Matt Jones a stiff arm into the turf and, and off he goes for a touchdown and, you know, wins it um, literally, you know, as the, as the, uh, as the hoot has blown. So, yeah, very, very unlike the, you know, Patriots way, isn't it, really? You know, usually you, you think they'd um, more right. cautious and, and, and take, take the tackle and, and play for overtime. So, yeah, it's a... Bit, bit of a, a bizarre one, but uh, very very interesting for, for the Patriots. and Bill, Bill Belichick, and we're having nightmares about that one. Every, every part about it was comical to me. The fact that Bill Bill's played it safe, as he's known to always do, sometimes known as a boring coach. Obviously very successful, not doubting that, but known as a bit of a boring coach. He runs a draw, play for the running back, which means he just runs pretty much straight off an angle created by the linemen and he just hoped for the best. They were hoping for five or six yards and go into overtime. 
somehow they break through. Ramondre breaks through, thinks, oh, what? You know what? I can end this game early. Passes it to Jacoby Myers, which is completely crazy, unscripted. Then it gets even more comical. Myers chucks it back. Every, and then, like you said, to make it even better, the famous Matt Jones <laughs> is on the floor, skied after Chandler. Chandler just smashes him to the ground. Every single part about it was comical. Um, yeah, nightmares. Uh, and I think that's going to probably affect them this week, Bish. Uh, what, what have you got in the game? It could, it could, could it? It could be, you know, a bit add a bit more that they need because I think they're going to need it this week. This week, yeah. Windows are firing all cylinders, you know, um, going about the business, hitting form at the right time. A bit like last year, you know, they, they hit it just before the playoff. Burrow, again, another possible sneaky MVP. You know, yeah, he's he's, uh, he's looking really good. Throwing the touchdowns around the floor last week and the comeback against the Blitz. Um, and I like their offense. The set wide receiver, Gins, Chase, you've got Boyd coming in with a touchdown last week. We spoke about the backfield and mixing and some P Ryan and what they do. So I just think the Jingle will have too much for him in this game. Um, you know, it's tough to go against the Patriots at home, but for me, it's Bengals minus two here. Um, I mean, I had a look at the Patriots and their last four defeats have all been by a bigger margin than this. So, you know, this, this will be, I'm locking this one in as, as uh, one of my best bets. Brilliant. I've got, yeah, same as, well, not one of my best bets, but you've got to take Bengals minus three, a six game winning streak. Let's make it seven. Uh, we discussed, didn't we, how, well, I think I mentioned how every single year there seems to be a team after their bye week that just kicks on and on and on. And a lot of them end up doing pretty well in the playoffs. Obviously, famously, Tampa Bay was 6-6, six and six, had the bye week, and then went on to win the Super Bowl when uh, Brady won it a couple of years back. The example of the Cleveland Browns, when they went on their big run to beat the, beat the Steelers after the Steelers were something like 12-2 and two on the year 40, whatever it was. But they were strong favourites. The Browns hit a run. So I think that is so important. And I think Bengals will keep this up now. They're probably ready to... Take back the crown after just after losing it in the uh, in the in the Super Bowl last year, and I think they're ready to give it a go. Uh, like I said, Patriots lost three and four. They've they've been worse than the spread two out of nine game two out of the last nine games. I'm I'm all over the Bengals. I think the Pats have done a struggle. I can see an implosion from now. It's a strong word with Belichick as coach, but I think that, I think he's made some bad decisions going into this year. Not really. Not re- not getting a top wide receiver in, not getting putting a defensive coach as of the offensive coach. For people that don't know, I think is Matt Matt Patricia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Matt Patricia, known as a very defensive coach, not a very defense. I know not as a defensive coach. He's signed him as the off the offensive coach in this uh, for this season. It's it's all going wrong. They can't put a play together. Take the take the Cincinnati Bengals in this one and earn yourself a bit of money going into Christmas. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Next game, Bish, the New Orleans Saints versus the Cleveland Browns. This, uh, the Cleveland Browns are minus two and our favourites here. And the over-under is a paltry 32 and a half, Bish. Come on, let's give it let's give us some. That's very low, That's very low. It's uh, it's an uh, interesting game. They're in that, in that NFC South, which is just a bit all over the place at the minute with the Bucks founder and you know one one win separates the bottom there. There's everything to play, there's there's everything to play for the same place. Place. Um, I think it was six or seven yards short on our Lave. You know, both sides of us last week. I saw Andy Dalton throw a bomb downfield, and I was praying it was Lave on the end of it. <laughs> that was a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it, yeah, I think what stood out for me in this one is, is the Browns. You know, we know Sean Watson's coming in. It's a bit like an extended preseason for him. I think you we're know, building for next year. But one thing I think the, the bread and butter what they're doing really well is they run the ball really well. We make sure. and that allows them to just run down just the run time. Down the rank second in the league, the time of possession. The time of possession. You know, they have the ball they for over 30 minutes, minutes a game. Minutes a game. Um, and the yeah, way they play, the I think that sort of means 
they're generally in they're low scoring games. Really games. You don't really get don't those really big exposure plays. It's the three yards, three yards. It's not a grinding team. Um, so that I think that's why the, the over under is so low. Yeah, but for me, with the Saints, have got stuff to play for. You know, a huge oh, amount. Huge looking at the Saints here, Saints and here, I'm looking at plus two and a half here. I think it's worth taking. Um, the overs, you can't go under. You definitely can't go under it. Statistically, nearly impossible. They want you to take overs, and you know, if I was leaning one way, I would take overs. I'd focus more on the Saints. Yeah, I'm with you, Bish. Saints plus two and a half. It's I could see, like you said, you could you can easily see a world where the Saints win this. I'm surprised they're not the Saints' favourite with what they've got on the line. Uh, Kamara Kamara's been up and down, but very good, very good rusher, very good running back. Alave has been brilliant. Um, I think they're getting it together. They've had Michael Thomas early on in the season. I think. He normally brings a bit of spice, doesn't he? But um, and I think that works against them sometimes. But I think they're getting it together. They look, they have some bad games, they have some good games. But I think they've got this one, bitch. They're in a, uh, yeah. I'm with you. Quite simply, I'm with you. And I, you've got to take the over. I'm not. I'm not best betting it or anything like that. But you, you've got to, aren't you? It seems too ridiculous. You can ch- chuck. Chuck that in a fun one. If you've got a fun one going, chuck that in because it will most likely hit. But as you said, you never know. They're both very good rushing teams, so you might you, the time might be there might be that little time in the game where that's the case. But be crazy if that's if if that if that if the under hit on that, all hell will break loose. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky to win some cash. <laughs> Next game, Bish, we'll move right on. It's not that that wasn't the most appetizing game, but this one is to me, Bish. The Detroit Lions versus the Carolina Panthers. Minus two and a half favourites on the Detroit Lions. Seven and seven. They're on the rush. They're what my favourite team this year. I love watching them. I love the coach. I love hard knocks. I love everything about this team. Come on, Bish. Join me. Go the Lions, yeah. Like said, everyone's team and a big win last week against the Jets. Against the playoff hopes are lives. Yeah, I think one probably thing that stands out for me is NFC. No love for the Pro Bowl at all, which is surprising for me because everyone seems to be jumping on them. Maybe it's a bit too late and the votes are already in. But yeah, they're doing well. Um. A big win last week, as I, week as I said. I think, quite, I think it's the first time um, they've let me yeah, down. I was on the overs and, and finished on 37 points. I was, um, I was the touchdown short. Touchdown short. So that, that's disappointing, that's but, disappointing but, but we go again. We go again. We do. Um, I like liking, liking them this week. Just speaking on the Panthers. On the Panthers. They were, as I said, there again in the NFC South, which is really telling but last week, you know, last week, you know, we spoke about him running, the ball, running well. the ball well. Yeah, and last week, yeah, last week, the Lions, the Lions only gave up twenty. Gave up 20, 20 oh, sorry, the Steelers only Steelers gave up twenty in the yards to, to, um, to the Panthers. Yeah, to so the Panthers. Totally shut them down. And over the, the, over the, 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 the last few weeks, weeks, the Lions have really fronted up really in defense, defense in terms of rushing the, terms of rushing the ball. They're still very poor, defending the. The quarterback, quarterback you know, pushing the ball, pushing you know, the ball, you know tightened up, tightened up. Um, um, but in this one for me, I'm going Lions minus two, minus two. Um, and I'm having another and go at the overs. And just an interesting, an interesting, one, interesting one, I've got. one I've got. So, as I said, so, about, the Lions, said about the Lions, um, the Lions um, defending, uh, wide defending wide receivers, and the last five games that given up at least one receiver, 96 yards or more. So, so, and Arnold and Arnold DJ and Moore, DJ I think they've got a nice little connection. Nice little connection. Um, yeah. In his last three out of five, three out of five. DJ Moore's been DJ the top target in wide receiver, wide receiver. Uh, for the Panthers. Yeah, so, the, Panthers so, the lines are out, the lines so we can't see what it is, but I'd be looking at that and maybe have a little bit of on DJ Moore, Rovers receiving yards. Really? I like it, Bish. like it. 
Yeah, I'm with you, Detroit, all the way on this one. Like you said, at certain points this season, to say that both these teams are fighting for the playoffs is an absolute miracle. Uh, I think it's impressive, to be fair to both of them, very impressive. They've both gone through a bit, but I've got Detroit. They've actually, if we're talking about fantasy football, the Detroit have given up the four fewest fantasy points to running backs. Obviously, that doesn't bode well for brilliant for Carolina. bit of that is that they're actually improving on defence. Uh, Aidan Hutchinson's getting better. The defensive line's getting better. But it probably also says how bad the cornerbacks and the safeties have been for Detroit as well because <laughs> because that seems crazy to say, doesn't it? I think I've even shocked you saying that one. Uh, but I think it's just because the rest of the defence has been that bad that they can other teams can throw it about very easily as well. So there's a bit of caveat on that, but give give the Detroit Lions some support. They look better on defence anyway. When I'm watching them, they pass the eye test to me that they're getting better and better. Not saying much because they were so bad at the start of the season, but <laughs> any growth is growth at the end of the day. Um, so yeah, Detroit Lions eight and seven. Let's let's get the Detroit Lions in the playoffs after they just <laughs> deserve it. They deserve it. Uh, yeah, it might be my passion for how much I like the team and how much I love the spirit. I watched a video of them at the start of the season with Jamal Williams uh, getting them all around. I think it must have been a clip from Hard Knocks, but them all around in the huddle and they go, lads, let's... I don't know if he used the word lads, it's very English, but he went out. <laughs> we're, we're, we're going to prove them wrong this year. And he give, he give a five-minute speech to all the team saying, rallying the troops and all that. Say how bad they've been, and Jamal Williams released by the Packers wasn't wasn't considered there. It's a team of players who really didn't fit in, apart from obviously Amon Ra being the star. Jared Goff released by the Rams, well traded by the Rams. All these players who didn't quite fit in are just rocking it all around the park, and then spearheaded by these two amazing players that I think they got in the first round of Amon Ra two years ago and Aiden Hutchinson last year. Brilliant. So, yeah, Detroit Lions, come on. <laughs> Detroit. But very passionate with that, actually, wasn't it, Bishop? <laughs> and then final game of the six o'clock slot on Red Zone, Bish. I've got the, well, no, the Atlanta Falcons versus the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are minus seven favourites here, Bish. And the over-under is 35 and a half. Off you go. Yeah, it surprised me that that, that spread on that minus. My, yeah, it's a it's a it's a big um, it's a big spread for in Baltimore's favour there. And I think that this matchup is both teams run the ball here, don't they? We know you know you yeah. spoke about the Falcons a lot, Algier. They both run the ball well. Both struggling at quarterback. You know Lamar's still out. Even when he was in, they struggled passing the ball. You know Falcons changed their quarterback. So that's you know at this late in the stage, um, in this late in the season, but just looking at the running stats, I think J.K. Dobbins last week, thirteen carries for one hundred and twenty-five yards, average nine point six a carry, and then Algier had one hundred and thirty-nine yards and a touchdown. So it's going to be on the ground, slog, slog. Um, I, I just think the difference is in this one, the Ravens defending the run, the Ra Ravens defending the run are the third best team in the league. Wow. So I just think that gives them the edge. I don't like them. I'd probably... I'd be looking at Falcons, to be honest, plus seven. Is it seven or seven and a half? Uh, I got it just seven. Seven. I'd be looking at Falcons plus seven. I think this one is your, your low scoring, possibly win by a field goal. It, it, that's sort of what it looks like for me. Um, and just a little angle on this one... It came, we had it earlier on in the season and it came in. I'd be looking at Daniel Ridder over 0 0.5 interceptions. You know, I think oh, at some I, point, like I think if the Ravens are up, at some point they're going to have to throw the ball just to try and you know, keep up and, and, and get back in the game. And the Ravens are second best, second best defence with 14 interceptions this year. So... Um, it'd be it'd be a small amount, but came in for us before. I'm um, I've actually wrote it down, Bish, because I'm not added to uh, my bet for this game. Um, 
I'm all over with you. I think Atlanta plus seven, pretty much similar to you. But I'm not saying they're winning by any slot of the imagination. By any, I'm not saying they're winning, but plus seven's crazy to say they're both just going to run the ball. They're both just going to run the ball. Tyler Algier, I'm happy I called this one. One of my claims of the season. He's been brilliant. Patterson's taken a bit of a back seat, but still amazing. We know how good Corderell is at this point. So they're, they're two amazing running backs. And obviously the Ravens have got J.K. Dobbins, who last who still haven't had a massive uh, percentage of snap share. Obviously sharing it with Gus Edwards and even um, the third choice one. Uh, that I forgot. Justice Hill. Justice Hill. Justice Hill. It's a three-horned attack that now, um, mm. headed by Dobbins. So you've got three amazing running backs on both sides because Caleb, Hunt, Caleb, Caleb Huntley's taking a bit of a back seat, but still gets involved. So you've got three running backs versus three running backs. I think that's quite uh, interesting. Uh, so yeah, I've, I've got the Ravens to probably win, but Atlanta to cover. I don't think there's going to be many points. I'm going to take the under at this. I know that's a big statement at 35 mm. and a half, but I, I can see Dobbins maybe breaking free for like a 60-yard run and maybe getting a touchdown. I can see that's the only touchdown that's going to excite me. I can't. Huntley has been struggling. He's obviously been, not found out, it's a bit harsh, but he's obviously been put to the test and he's failing. So you, you can you can stop Huntley. I think probably Mark Andrews hasn't been amazing recently. So they don't run the ball. Atlanta are going to run the ball. I'm taking the under. Maybe a touchdown or two on either side with a big run, but I can't say anything more than that. And then I've actually, yeah, taken the under. Atlanta plus seven. And then I'm going to nick your one as well, put the over 0 0.5 interceptions and make it a big treble. Let's have some fun. It will be the worst game to watch of the week, but the best one for betting, I predict. That's it, the Christmas special. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> the Christmas special bet. Let's do it. Uh, Bish, uh, concluding thoughts then. Let me add the old banner of Bish's best bets. Give us your free, well. Bish. So my free. I've, I'm going to have to go away from my usual uh, against the spread uh, against over the spread. Higher, prop because, higher prop because, you know, it's, we're, we're it's filming it's early. Well, the games will be early 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 this, early this early week, so there's no play of props. My first one My first is one Bengals is minus, three. minus three. I uh, second one will be, will be Bills at the Bears, Bears over 40.5 40 point point. point. And my last and one. My last one. Ooh, it's, a, it's a tough one. It's I'm looking at the Lions. At the Lions. Game. Panthers. Panthers. Do they have enough points in them? I'm not sure. sure. To, to claim the over. So I'm going to go. Number, number three will be Lions minus two and a half. So, Oof. we're keeping that Lions bandwagon rolling. I like it. Yeah, no, you've got to, haven't you, Bish? You've been, you've been supporting them every week. Like you said, they've only let you down once. I'm with you. I like it. Um, I think we're going to have a major disagreement then on our best bets on one of them, though. Um, I've got, so, my first best bet, I'll chuck um, the Seattle Seahawks on plus 10. I've got that one. as I've got that one. I think, like you said... You just the Chiefs are four nine and one against the spread. The Seahawks aren't that bad. They have won the ball. Chief, uh, they've got brilliant. Court. I just cut. Yeah, Seahawks plus ten. My third, my second one is the one I've just mentioned there. My Christmas special bet of the Atlanta plus seven under thirty five and a half points and Daniel Ridder stolen from Bish to get over zero point five interceptions. A treble on Christmas Eve. And, let, and make the Christmas spending a bit easier for you after, you, after that comes in. <laughs> <laughs> and then my third one, the one that we're disagreeing on, Bish, I've got the Chicago Bears to cover plus eight, and I'm going to chuck in Justin Fields to get a touchdown. A nice little double there. Uh, yeah, goes against your obviously one. You're on the Bills side and on the overs. I, I was going to go unders actually. I bottled it last second as I was talking. I bottled going the unders, <laughs> but I'm going Bears and Justin Fields to get a touchdown in that game. Bish, Bish, time for you to take over with Tags Touchdown Treble. There we go. And we're back. The Tags back. Touchdown Tags Treble Christmas <laughs> edition. Christmas edition. <laughs> and this week we're going with. Eric Henry, Eric Henry 
TJ Hawkinson and Deshaun Watson. We've not quite got a price on that yet. Some of the lines are out, but we'll update on socials. You can see that being huge, can't you, Bish? What 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 would be your prediction on that being a line? That I'm going fifteen to one there. Yeah, big. I think. I think it'll be around possible twelves, maybe. Derrick Henry. will be very. For me, that I think the the interesting ones to Sean Watson. His price will be interesting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, I like it. Tag going brave. He's a uh, he's on a bit of a bad run. I can't talk because I'm also on a bad run. But tag, all the best. <laughs> you just need that one winner. He does when it's like you said with a t- touchdown treble. Only needs one, and then you're made up for that. Covers you for about five or six weeks, doesn't it? When you land one like that. Yeah. Um, and then Bish. There's two things I want to mention. Um, one of them you're going to cover, but. Again, just remind the viewers, 8th of January, Red Zone Live returns. We're going to get there. Craig, show me the money. New York Patriots himself is back. We've had announcement. We've also oh. got a surprise guest who will be here. So oh, it's, going be it's going to be a big It's going to be a big one, bitch. I'm excited. Uh, I'm, like, I'm really excited for it. We've got Dad. We've got the surprise guest. Maybe two surprise guests. Me and you are rocking it. Will it be, it'll be a great day. Please Come and watch us set your time for the 8th of January. And Bish, I think you're going to uh, tell the viewers about this one. The giveaway. So on that 8th of January show, January we're going to do a giveaway. We're going to do a giveaway. So, so, went to the giveaway. Went to the giveaway. Underneath. Underneath. Um, on the uh, social. On social. Underneath this, underneath this, this, pod, this pod for the next two for weeks. Like two weeks. We want to hear y'all. Want to hear y'all. So... So we've got, we've got we've got one entry per, one week. Entry per week. It's your best bet. It's your best bet. The qualifying the odds qualifying are even or above. Or above. And if it's a winner, if it's a winner, you're, you're going to a draw. Going to a draw for the giveaway. For the giveaway. Yeah. That'll be on Twitter as well. Be on Twitter, your YouTube comments. We're, we're going to follow them all and see. Bish, what's the stipulation though? You forgot the stipulation. The oh, you've lost me. You've lost me. Over evens, we can't. Oh yeah, over evens. Over yeah, the evens. odds, qualifying odds, odds, odds of evens or over. over. You can enter, you can enter week, 16, week sixteen, week seventeen. And if you're right, if you're right, it goes into the hat for the, the, hat the, hat for the, the draw. Are we staying the prize or we? No, let's yeah, let's celebrate the prize for all your rugby league fans. Obviously, it is a rugby league channel at first. Probably going to grow into an NFL channel eventually. Bish will take over, but at the moment it is a predominantly rugby league fan base. So it, the prize is two tickets to any game of your choice to the upcoming season. It's right, two tickets, any game of your choice, minus the playoffs. Any game, any season, in season game, will get you two tickets if you pull off a best bet of over evens. Just to add as well, obviously, well, you've got to subscribe, to the, to, subscribe to the channel. Oh, yeah, actually, Bish. Please like, subscribe, and share with everyone. We're still growing. We're doing okay. We're just we're getting there. Our YouTube shorts do amazing, Bish. I didn't know if you know that, but on our side, the shorts do really well. Um, that's a fun, fun fact for people who are watching. But share it, like it. The more you like, the more it helps the algorithm. Subscribe if you're not already. Please share about. Uh, Bish, brilliant week. Let's have another redemption week, Bish. Final thoughts. Yeah, let's do it. Christmas special. What a better way to uh, get us into Christmas than staying in the next month. I'll be looking forward to it. Brilliant. Again, Two tickets, game of your choice. Get your best bets below. You've got two weeks to enter. Get them in. Got to be over evens to qualify. Uh, let's get it on. Two tickets to any game of your choice for the rugby league season. Bish, been a pleasure as always. Good luck. Good luck. I think I think I need it, Bish. So, uh... We all do. We all do. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. Let's go. Week 16. See you on Saturday.